Good morning. So Good today morning. We, and we quiet. <laughs> we're gonna be quiet. Because today we are be quiet. reading books. So each child has chosen their book. And mom's gonna read. So be the quiet. first book is Pete the Cat and the Treasure Map by James Dean. And I'm gonna try my best because I didn't have my glasses on this morning. Okay. Captain Pete looks across Cat Cove. The sun is sparkling on the water. It's a beautiful day for a beautiful adventure. Something flies toward Captain Pete's ship. It's a parrot. Can you guys see the parrot? No! You might even try to see the parrot. Where the parrot at? See the bird in here? Nope. It's holding. It is. It's right there. I see the water. This, this the parrot holding something. What is the parrot holding? Um, It says, squawk, says the parrot. She gives Captain Pete a crumbled piece of paper. What is it? Maybe. Asks his first mate, Callie. Captain Pete looks at the paper. There's a long trail that ends with an X. It's a treasure map, he says. Treasure? I don't says first mate, Callie. Where? On Secret Island, says Captain Pete. Let's go, says first mate, Callie. Woo-hoo! cries the crew treasure so that's what the parrot had in his mouth he had a note and on the note it was a map a secret island swoosh splash captain pete steers the ship through the big waves the salty wind pushes the sails the ship is going really fast good job mateys says captain pete We'll be there in no time. <laughs> uh oh. Captain Pete spoke too soon. He spies something coming toward him. What is that? asked his first mate, Callie. A giant arm. You see an arm, Jace? No. Reaches up and splashes the water. It makes a wave that crashes down on Pete's boat. Splash! Squawk! Cries the parrot. Arr! Yes, the crew. Cross splash! Another arm comes crashing down. Do y'all see what it is? An octopus? Let's see. Yeah. The crew is scared. It's an octopus. But not Captain Pete. He knows that the monster isn't trying to scare them. He's rocking a cool beat. Captain Pete takes out his guitar and scrums. The monster rises out of the water. The crew takes cover, but the monster stops when he hears Pete playing. You see the octopus? And I see the stickers. He nods his head along. He's not a scary sea monster. He's an awesome sea drummer. Rock on, says Captain Pete. Thanks, booms the monster. I thought that was an octopus. They're calling him a sea monster. It was an octopus. Oh, no, Captain shouts. First mate, Callie. A big storm is coming. Batter down the hatches, says Captain Pete. Everyone gets ready for the storm. The waves toss the ship, but the crew is brave. All right, let's see. Captain Pete has an idea. Hey there, friend, he adds to the sea monster. We need some help. The monster grabs the ship with his giant arms and gives it a great big boost. The ship moves right through the storm. Y'all see the, mon the sea monster pick no. up the ship? Yeah, he is. He is real. Oh, he's picking up that ship. Hooray, shouts the crew as the monster swims up to the boat. Thanks, friend. Yeah, it's Captain Pete. No problem. Booms the monster. Go away. You're making it to the island. Land ho! Yells first mate. Callie pointing over the sea. All the pirates rush to look. It's Secret Island, says Captain Pete. <gasps> they made it, y'all. Secret, yeah, Secret Island. Secret Island. I get the phone. Now, now you mean it. 
on the beach, their buddy Grumpy Toad is waiting with the glittering pile of treasure. My book. Oh, they made it to the treasure, y'all. Ahoy, matey. You got my map, Grumpy Toad says. Treasure is no fun if you can't share it with your friend. The crew is so happy. They do cat wheels in the sand. Thanks, Grumpy Toad, they shout. Maria. I think we're missing something, says Captain Pete. Let's play some music. Oops, oops. What a great idea, says Grumpy Toad. The pirates load all the treasure onto the ship. Captain Pete takes out his guitar and strums, but something is missing from his song. What's missing, y'all? The octopus. Good job. Our drummer. Captain Pete says that as the sea monster pops his head above the waves. Would you like to join my crew? Hey, booms the monster. Rock on, Captain Pete says as the monster joins. And on a and on a rocking pirate tune, Captain Pete crew is complete. All the pirates sing, "Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for us." Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for us. What they sing? Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for us. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for us. Good job, y'all. Now we have a book from Mr. Jace. The Gingerbread Boy. Gingerbread Boy? <laughs> it's a boy. <laughs> the Gingerbread Boy. Once there was a couple who lived in a cottage in the countryside. The man loved to garden. The woman loved to bake. Ooh, she's gonna bake some pie. See that pie right there? Y'all see that pie? Yeah. She baking a pie. And a gingerbread pie. One day, the woman decided to bake a gingerbread. Man. Boy! It's a boy! <laughs> <laughs> she made a batch of dough. She rolled it flat and cut it in the shape of a gingerbread. Boy! It's a boy! <laughs> <laughs> she gave him eyes, a mouth, and clothes. Then she put the gingerbread boy into the oven to bake. And then she took him out. When gingerbread boy was done, the woman opened the oven door. Yeah. Gingerbread boy jumped out of the oven. He ran through the kitchen shouting, Do not eat me! <laughs> Stop! Yeah, the woman, and she ran after him. But Gingerbread Boy ran faster, saying, Run, run, <laughs> as fast as you can. But you can cannot, you cannot catch me. No one can. Stop, Jace. Gingerbread Boy ran into the garden. Stop, yelled the man. I want to eat you. But Gingerbread Boy ran faster, chanting, Run, run, as fast as you can. You cannot catch me. No one can. The man ran after him, but he could not catch him. <laughs> Gingerbread boy soon came across the cat. You smell tasty. Ooh. Heard the cat. Ooh. I would like to eat you. No. But Gingerbread boy laughed and said, Run, run, as fast as you can. You cannot catch me. No one can. The cat ran after him, but she could not catch him. Gingerbread boy ran on and on. Soon he came to a hungry horse. Please stop, said the horse. You look very good to eat. Gingerbread boy laughed it and called it out. Run, run, fast as you can. You cannot catch me. No one cared. The horse ran after Gingerbread boy, but he could not catch, catch him. him. Nope. Nobody can catch, catch him. him. Gingerbread boy reached a wide river, but he did not know how to swim. A sly and hungry fox suddenly appeared. Gingerbread boy said, run, run, as fast as you can. You cannot catch me, no one can. I would not catch you, even if I could, fox said. Gingerbread boy had to cross the river or the woman, man, cat, and horse would catch him. He asked for fox help. Of course, replied fox. Jump on my tail and I will take you across. Gingerbread boy jumped on Fox's tail and they started across the river. When they were out in the river, Fox said, You are too heavy for my tail. Jump on my back. So Gingerbread boy jumped on the Fox's back. After swimming a little further, Fox said, 
The water is deep. You may get wet. Ooh. Jump on my nose. No. Ooh. So the gingerbread boy jumped on Fox's nose. When they reached the riverbank, Fox slipped gingerbread boy in the air. Fox snapped his mouth shut and ate him. That was the end what the? of gingerbread boy. What happened? Gingerbread boy, gingerbread boy trusted who? The fox. Only because the fox said, I ain't gonna hurt you. He tricked, he tricked gingerbread boy, didn't he? No, what? Hold on, because I already didn't have me hurt. He tricked gingerbread boy, helped him all the way across the water. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting closer, closer to my nose. And then what'd he do? He got eaten. Cause that was a gingerbread boy. Now if it was a grown gingerbread man, he probably would have had to keep run, run as fast as you can. You cannot catch me. I'm no one can. And I'll fight you with your head. Ooh. All right. Now we have Ari book, and this book is called Curls. Ooh, this is a thick book. Ooh. Me, morning. Mirror, smile. <laughs> Take that thumb out your mouth. Shine big. Hair love. Up soft, black, brown, thick curl, sun, crown. I want that hair for the Easter. I'm not gonna wash until I am. Smooth grease, yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> Sweet braids. That's you, you have the braids. B sway. J's. Okay. Sit, no, never, ever. I let me, you go get your hair washed. Always free. Like me. <laughs> Period. And that book was Curls. Now we're coming up on our last book. It's called Itty Bitty Kitty Corn by Shannon Hale and Lou and Fam. Hope I see it, did we? Let's go, Ari, let's sit go. Sit down, Ari. <laughs> Kitty thinks she might be a unicorn. A horn sits atop her fuzzy head pointing up, up, up to the sky. She feels so perfectly unicorny. Look at me, says Kitty. Oh, that's not her. <laughs> Where are you going? You're not a unicorn, putty pie. Says Parakeet. Just You're curled up like a cat. Fluffy fry. Okay. Says Gecko. I'll take this one. Yeah. Watch out, Jace. You in the middle of my camera. We're doing reading time. Watch out. We don't want to do it well. Kitty stands tall. She presses on her paw clawed Mommy. unicorn hooves. She gallops on her inksy oh, winksy unicorn legs. Look at me, says Kitty. You're still not a unicorn, fuzzy henny, says Parakeet. You have a stubby tail. Teeny tiny, says Gecko. Turn around. Gecko. A gecko is a lizard. Kitty closes her eyes. She concentrates and poof, her tail puffs up fat. Look at me, says Kitty. You're never going to be a unicorn, funny fool, says Parakeet. You me out in your sleep. We're doing something. So you gotta wait. I it's reading time. You me out in your sleep, <laughs> Missy Moo, says Gecko. Mm. Nay, says Kitty. Nay, nay, nay. She sticks her pink nose in their ears in case they didn't hear. It. Nay. You're a cat, says Peggy. And that's that, says Gecko. Read the rest of Ari for a second. Let's go.
keeps her magnified in town. The sun is low, the shadows are long. At last, she looks exactly how she feels. Ooh, thank you. Uh, All right. So I can just see it. Ha ha, look at me now. Come on, Ari. Yells Kitty. Until, clop, clop, clop. Gecko points with his fat tip finger. Now that's a unicorn. The unicorn brandishes his horn. He sweeps his magnificent tail. He needs a, he needs a mighty nay. Suddenly, Kitty feels no bigger than a ball of lint. Ooh. Flop, flop, flop. I so admire your fuzzy ears and silver whiskers, says Unicorn. You do, says Kitty. Oh. And I wondered. Unicorn looks right and then left. Did you know? What? Says Kitty. Did you know, says Unicorn, whispering now. What? 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 Yells what? Kitty. <laughs> Did you know, says Unicorn, that I am a Kitty Corn? Kitty gasps. Her tiny tail switches with joy. Yes, says Kitty. I see that now. You are a kitty corn. You are a fuzzy, adorable kitty corn. Unicorn nods. I knew that. Another kitty corn like you would see. Yes, says Kitty. I see you. Kitty and Unicorn are both kitty corns. Kitty trots on her soft, teeny paws, and Unicorn pads on his huge golden hooves. They both like to toss their manes and brandish their horns. They both like to scamper at the bumblebees and scratch out in the patch of grass. And when the sun is low, their shadows merge till you can no longer tell one from the other. That was a good book, boy. Well, Mommy, skip a page. No, I didn't. I know Ari did. No, I did. She didn't skip it. Good job. Read. Read the time. Thank you for joining me and my family as we do our okay, reading yeah. time, reading our books, just trying to spend some time in here with each other, relaxing. Is that the same books with Mars's family and Nicholas? So thanks, YouTube, for tuning in with J Creates. And her babies. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye,